It's day 40 of Lyrics for His Life. We're considering today the theme of our great high priest. If you're following along with us during Lent, it's also Monday Thursday, the night we remember Jesus praying his great priestly prayer for us. But today as we're following along the events of Jesus' life, we're thinking about his work now as he intercedes for us. Before we get into this very exciting Psalm and understanding, let's join our voices to Jesus as he blesses his Father with Psalm 103. Imagine ourselves standing next to him before the throne of God. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your iniquity, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit, who crowns you with steadfast love and mercy, who satisfies you with good, so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. Today's scripture is Psalm 110, verses 1 through 4. The Lord says to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. The Lord sends forth from Zion your mighty scepter. Rule in the midst of your enemies. Your people will offer themselves freely on the day of your power in holy garments. From the womb of the morning, the dew of your youth will be yours. The Lord has sworn and will not change his mind. You are a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. The Lord is at your right hand. He will shatter kings on the day of his wrath. He will execute judgment among the nations, filling them with corpses. He will shatter chiefs over the wide earth. He will drink from the brook by the way. Therefore, he will lift up his head. What is this psalm about? Well, here comes a strange factoid. This is the psalm most often quoted in the New Testament. Technically, it is a royal psalm, extolling the divine favor upon the king. However, there is much more going on. It's worth the hard work to unpack it. First, we have to recall the difference between capital L-O-R-D and lowercase Lord. The all capital letters of Lord render the four Hebrew letters that we translate as Y-H-W-H, pronounced Yahweh. This is the sacred name of the one true God revealed to Moses in Exodus chapter 3. This is a holy and specific name. Lowercase Lord renders the Hebrew word we transliterate as Adonai, a title of respect that can range in meaning from sir to an owner to the God who rules and reigns over all. Out of respect for the sacred name, The Hebrews might see the letters Y-H-W-H, yet read aloud Adonai. The two words can be interchangeable, but not in Psalm 110. Psalm 110 begins by using both terms, as if two distinct persons were having a conversation. The Lord, Yahweh, says to my Lord, Adonai. This flips the circuit breakers in my mind. Wait, who is speaking here? David is the author of this psalm, so David records a conversation he heard. The eternal God was speaking to someone whom David called his Lord. David is the king. No human being was higher than David. So who could be King David's Lord. Perhaps some future king in David's line, through whom 
the Lord I am, Yahweh, would exercise full and flourishing reign over not just Israel, but the whole earth. And yet, how could the Lord be speaking to this future king if he had not yet come to be? How God's people must have puzzled over this psalm before Jesus came. For it seems that the Lord speaks to another divine being, one who is alive now, but will in the future come to reign next to the Lord and see all his enemies subdued. And there is still more mystery to come. The Lord next swears a promise to this Lord. He is not only a king, he is also a priest. A priest connects human beings with God. He speaks to people on behalf of God and speaks to God on behalf of the people. But this Lord in Psalm 110 is not a usual priest of Israel, someone descended through Aaron, the first priest, and his son Levi. No, this lordly priest, already alive in heaven, is after the order of Melchizedek. Genesis chapter 14, verse 18, tells us that Melchizedek was born a priest of God and the king of Salem in Abraham's time. Abraham gave tithes of the victory spoils to Melchizedek, as if he were making an offering to the Lord himself. And Melchizedek gave Abraham bread and wine, entering personal communion with him. He blessed Abraham in the name of God Most High and blessed God for subduing Abraham's enemies. So now let's put all that together. Psalm 110 directs us to a mighty king who brings peace, a priest who offers bread and wine and blessing. He already exists and yet is coming. He will share rule with the I am himself. Remind you of anyone? Following the complicated conversation in Psalm 110 between the Lord Yahweh and the Lord Adonai now reveals to us that Jesus had followed that same thread and found it very important. It's mentioned in three Gospels that Jesus teaches from this psalm. Matthew tells it this way, Now while the Pharisees were gathered together, Jesus asked them a question, saying, What do you think about the Christ? Whose son is he? And they said to him, well, he's the son of David. So Jesus said to them, how is it then that David, in the spirit, calls him Lord, saying, the Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I put your enemies under your feet. If David calls him Lord, how could he still be his son? Through his years of reading the Psalms and his prayers to the Lord whom he knew intimately as father, Jesus realizes how Psalm 110 had been written for him. This prophetic song of David gives Jesus insight into his unique identity as a man born of Mary and yet the Son of God conceived by the Holy Spirit. Jesus follows the scriptural logic to know that only one person could be both the Son and the Lord of King David. Only one man could rule over Israel from the heavenly position of the Father's right hand. Jesus himself. Moreover, Hebrews quotes Psalm 110 three times to connect Jesus with this Melchizedek priest. The true connector between God and humanity had to be the eternal Son of God who took flesh as Jesus. He alone is our faithful high priest, not by virtue of being descended from Levi, but by the power of his indestructible life. In rising, Jesus becomes like no other priest for he is able to intercede for us forever. For Jesus himself is the atonement in which we are reconciled to the Father.
Let's pray with Jesus. What was it like to read a conversation between your father and the saving king and priest only to realize that you were there? To have it dawn in your mind that the promised mighty righteous king and the longed for effective high priest are not only the same person, but it's you. Jesus, you are the key that unlocks the secrets of the scriptures. You are the realized hope that fulfills the ancient yearning of your people. You are the gentle shepherd who is the triumphant warrior, scattering the powers of evil and freeing your people from death and hell. You, Jesus, my familiar friend, my brother in the flesh, you are the mighty one who tenderly lifts me up. You are the abundant one who nourishes my hungry heart and fills my empty soul. Blessed, most glorious are you. Thank you.